Hello everybody and welcome to another video. In this video I'm going to be doing a Crushula ovata forest. The reason I'm going to do a Crushula ovata forest is because I've got so many propagations here that I do not want to put them each into an individual pot. So I will put them in this tray. This is the main plant if you can see. It just drops off um, juvenile plants all over the place. There's some in the pot as well. Let me just grab one here. There's one that it's recently dropped off. As you can see, the roots are. Let me get a close up. A little bit white. That's that's recently dropped off the plant. But these have dropped off um, quite a while back and I've been collecting them up and um, rehydrating them. I've been rinsing them under the tap because as they are a succulent they do maintain water for quite a while. But if they're left alone for too long they do start to uh, dry out. The leaves uh, aren't as plump. So what I've been doing over the last couple of weeks is just keeping them hydrated. As you can see the the roots go brown when um, when they dry out but if you rinse them under water and keep them hydrated the roots turn white again so what I'll do is I'll just count out how many I've got these two seem to be connected together which is odd we have a large one there some smaller ones, another large one, another large one, and some more. You can see why I don't want to put these each in individual pots, there's just too many of them. I don't want to be having to care for so many Crassula ovata plants. Um, they're also known as jade plant uh, or muddy plant, not muddy tree, that is a different plant. These are money plant or jade are the common names, uh, but the Latin name is Crassula ovata. There are some other species, um, the Gollum, which has, uh, it's the same uh, genus, which is Crassula, uh, possibly even ovata, but it might be a, a, a variation or a cultivar, they sometimes call them. which has, um, instead of the money, uh, penny-shaped leaves, they have like an elongated cone shape. Um, so it looks like there's quite a lot of propagations here. What I might do is just uh, fill the seed tray with uh, compost. I'll do that first. And Possibly some cocoa coir. Uh, I, I know that helps with hydration. Uh, this compost can sometimes dry out and go um, lose the aeration. So I'll put some uh, coir in. This is just an experiment. I can always try again with um, some more, uh, call them cuttings if you like. They, they just drop off really. So a base layer of soil compost even and some coconut coir I think I presume it's coconut coir and this is hydrated it comes in a block here in the UK but you um, put it put the block in a bucket put some water in leave it for overnight or something and, and then it'll in the next day it will be hydrated so what I've done is just once it's hydrated I put it into a, a, a sealed bag can you see it there it's over there anyway so what I'll do is I'll just mix this up a little bit so we've got some sort of a base. What I will do is I'll put some vermiculite over the top, um, I think, uh, just to keep the moisture in because this is a shallow tray, I think that it might dry out very quickly. Okay, well, so because this is a Crassula ovata forest, what I will do is put the large ones in the centre and then around the outside I will put the smaller ones. So starting with the biggest, it looks like that one. You see it's actually got some roots 
Uh, some nice white roots there on the end. Uh, these look a bit brown. So what I'll do is I'll put the, the white roots in there and each node I will place near the ground, near the soil. Okay, so that's a start. Now the next largest one looks like this one which is actually connected to there. So what I'll do with that one is perhaps put this one on the on this side. Always poking the roots down into the soil if possible. Now this this might grow really odd, uh, but it is just a, a tester. This, uh, I need to do something with these Crassula avata um, juvenile plants. So this is about the best thing that I can think of is just to put them into a seed tray. And eventually as they grow up I think I will put them into a like a bonsai pot so keep the roots uh, small and um, you know grow grow the forest into a bonsai um, forest tray I've seen a lot of people doing that not not so much with crassula avata they tend to grow those in up as large plants like the one over here uh, by the way this one is about 35 years old it's quite um, a mature plant so it's, it does produce quite a lot of, uh, I don't know what the word is for them. If you know what the word is, uh, post it in the comments. But I'll just call them um, juvenile plants or propagations. There's some nice roots on that one. Oh, by the way, the temperature in here at the moment is 28.6 degrees Celsius. And the humidity is 41%. So it's still quite early on in the day, but this garden room will get very hot uh, so if I'm squinting my apologies it's quite bright in here that looks like it's um, dried out a little bit too much so I'll leave that one side some nice roots again uh, we'll put that one in the center and some brown roots on that one but I do see you see these these will just root very easily they have they actually produce the, the roots whilst uh, on the plant itself. Let's see if I can find one. Oh yeah, the end there, uh, it's not, that's not ready to drop off yet, otherwise it would. Sometimes you can just, you know, touch, delicately touch the uh, the branches and the, it will just drop off. Um, we'll call them seedlings for now. So, I may have to do two forests. There's, there's absolutely loads of these. Um, I'll just pick the best ones with the with the best roots, that one's got nice white roots on it, as you can see. So we'll put that one there in the centre. Um, what next then? Okay, uh, what I may do uh, instead of vermiculite, uh, I think I will try uh, sphagnum moss just to keep the moisture in. So, what I'll do is I'll just, I won't cover the leaves, I'll just sprinkle the sphagnum moss this is live sphagnum moss by the way I know it looks a bit like it's not um, it, I've had it a couple of years now and it was in the summer it goes bright green but I think it's starting to rot slightly so um, hopefully uh, it will now the summer's here the uh, color will come back into it because it's usually a really bright green color it's quite nice to work with actually What I think I may do is do two Crassula avata forests because there's so many of them. And obviously I'll keep you updated on how things are going. Uh, if you want to see any seed planting uh, videos or houseplant tours, uh, houseplant updates, uh, garden tours, uh, check out the playlists. Uh, there's plenty of videos up now so I don't think you'll get bored. Also, if you uh, see anything that I'm doing which may not be right, post it in the comments. I'm always willing to learn. You know, this is what it's all about. We're not all masters. Okay, so there's one tray done. I'll put that aside for a moment. Just give you a close-up of it. You can see only some of them are popping up through the sphagnum moss, but uh, it will help to keep it moist. So what I'll do now is another one. There's already some cocoa core, 
broken up, hydrated. So I'll put some compost in now. This is organic compost that I use. It's a it's, it's New Horizon from Westland is the company, and it's organic and peat free. So uh, it's very good for your vegetables. That's I think that's what it's. Um, made for is growing produce so I use this uh, for all all the plants even even the house plants there's a, a woodlouse so it's obviously good if it's got pests in it well I wouldn't really call wood lice a pest but I, I suppose they could be in a way but that, that doesn't alarm me what alarms me more is um, green fly and things like that you know things that will actually suck the life out of your plants you know that's not good that needs to be addressed straight away okay so we've got a base layer of uh, soil and coir uh, what I'll do now is just quickly poke these in roots facing down now rather than just compost these it's worth growing trying to grow them on you know as long as it doesn't become too much of a chore to look after everything, you know, never take on too much. Uh, always just uh, look after what you can, and uh, you know, when you're ready to move on to other things, then that's fine. But what I've found is when you when you do have too much to look after, certain things uh, start to get get neg neglected. Now, if it's something expensive like um, a rare house plant, it can be quite um, upsetting uh, if you lose something that you've paid a lot of money for. But obviously, these Crassula ovata they're only cheap uh, to buy. I think you can buy a small plant, uh, perhaps you know five or six inches with a few stems coming. Um, you know, they're about five pounds to buy. Whereas the large crassula of artists, you know, they are quite expensive, but uh, you, you're more likely to look after them. Plus, with these crassula of artists, you can feel the leaves. Now, if, if the leaves feel plump, then it doesn't need water. When they start to um, depress and you can see a slight wrinkling on the leaves, that means it needs water. Now, I still have a few more. I don't know whether to just put these in rather than do another tray. Yeah, I think I'll put them in here. They may not all survive, but they're quite tough, these crassula of Arta, so um, maybe they will. And it should be uh, fun to watch a crassula of Arta forest um, emerge. So just a few left. I do have some seeds to plant as well. So... Um, stay tuned for the next video which will probably be a seed planting video I have some lettuce seeds to plant uh, what else do I have I wanted to get some sunflower seeds uh, to start uh, microgreens uh, I know that broccoli is a good one to use for microgreens along with you know all, all your brassicas um, these don't look too brilliant now but I will put that one in, these two, if we can find space, on there, on there. Any more? Mm, no, I think that'll do. Okay, so now the sphagnum moss on the top. Don't need to be too meticulous with this. You know, it's just to keep the moisture in. Because what I find in here is that it gets very hot. Um, I've seen 34 degrees Celsius so far this year and we're in the start of May, uh, mid-May even, and the humidity gets very low in here, so I'm not going to put a, a humidifier in here, I will, if things need more humidity I'll move, move them into another area like the the rare house plants that, that I've got uh, are not in here anymore some house plants are I do have a uh, epipremnum aureum um, 
well, Golden Pothos, as you might know it, and some Philodendron Lemon Lime, Philodendron Scandens, or the other word for it is Hederaceum. I think Scandens means scattering, it's the way it grows, like that. But they're along the top shelf. They, in my experience, can tolerate a little bit more drying out, well, less humidity. So I will leave them in here for the moment, but if they, do, if they do start to suffer, then I'll move them into an area with a slightly lower temperature and more humidity. I have pea plants in here, um, carrots, strawberries, tomatoes. I'll be potting up some tomatoes next. As you can see, there's a, a nice tomato plant behind me. It looks like it might be too hot because the leaves are starting to curl slightly. Uh, there's chilli peppers in here and cucumbers, I will be leaving the cucumbers in here and the other day I bought some a pumpkin plant, now I think I'll leave that, I think I'll move that outside because as far as I'm aware this is gourd, although it looks like a cucumber, I'm not sure whether a cucumber is a gourd I could be wrong, they do look very similar. If you know this for sure, can you post it in the comments please? I'd like to know that. Um, I think that's all then for today. So you've seen the Crassula Avata forests. I'll keep you updated on how these are doing. I'll obviously mist them with water, make sure they don't dry out too much. I imagine this sphagnum moss will dry out very quickly. So I'll need to keep an eye on this, but at least it'll keep the soil and cocoa core medium underneath moist. I will do an update on how the seedlings are going very soon, so stay tuned for that. I will also do another seed planting video and a garden tour, because there's some nice things in the garden I'd like to show you as well. Okay, thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye.